Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about dysphagia. Dysphagia is the sensation of difficulty or abnormality of swallowing. It is due to a structural or a motility abnormality in the passage of solids or liquids from the mouth to the stomach. It ranges from an inability to initiate the swallowing reflex to foods or liquids being stuck in the esophagus. In contrast, odanophagia is pain with swallowing. The swallowing reflex is the process by which food is transported from the mouth to the stomach. Anatomically, swallowing has been divided into three phases, oral, pharyngeal, and esophageal phases. The oral phase is where food is prepared into a bolus and the act of swallowing occurs. Swallowing involves a number of processes which will result in food entering safely into the oropharynx. During the pharyngeal phase, the tongue covers the oropharynx and the epiglottis closes the airway and the upper esophageal sphincter relaxes, allowing the food, the bolus, to move into the esophagus. During the esophageal phase, the esophagus, including the lower esophageal sphincter, relaxes to receive the bolus. As a result, a large part of a liquid bolus may move into the stomach by gravity alone if the person is standing. The residual liquid bolus is uh, cleared by the peristaltic contraction waves. Solid bolus usually does not move down by gravity and requires peristaltic contraction for its transport. The lower esophageal sphincter is a physiological sphincter and contributes by multiple mechanisms. These are the increasing tone of the muscularis in this area, the right diaphragmatic crus, which contracts during sneezing and coughing to prevent reflux of content from the stomach, and the angle of hiss, which acts as a valve. There are two main types of dysphagia, oropharyngeal and esophageal. These two types are further classified as either being structural, meaning obstructive causes, and propulsive or neurological causes. A clinical pearl, dysphagia to solids may be indicative of a structural etiology, whereas dysphagia to either liquids alone or the combination of liquids and solids is likely a propulsive cause, a neurological cause. Let's begin with oropharyngeal dysphagia. So oropharyngeal dysphagia occurs when the patient is unable to transfer food bolus from the mouth into the upper esophagus by swallowing. Structural or obstructive causes of oropharyngeal dysphagia include tumors of the tongue and the tonsils or a peritonsillar abscess, a quincy. These pathologies cause an internal obstruction that leads to difficulty of passing solids more so than liquids. Zenka's diverticulum is an acquired sac-like pouching of the mucosa and submucosa layers, originating from the pharyngoesophageal junction. Zenka's diverticulum should be considered when undigested food is brought up several hours after a meal, or if a patient reports hearing a gurgling noise in the chest. The propulsive or neurological causes of oropharyngeal dysphagia includes things such as stroke, Parkinson's disease, motor neuron disease, multiple sclerosis, or myasthenia gravis. 80% of patients with Parkinson's disease develop oropharyngeal dysphagia. Motor neuron disease is a neurodegenerative disease affecting the motor nerve fibers, resulting in muscle weakness and atrophy. Studies have shown that the mechanism of dysphagia is due to progressive degeneration of the corticobulbar uh, pyramidal fibers that control the swallowing center. Dysphagia has been reported to be the only presenting complaint for myasthenia gravis, especially in the elderly. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disease. Normally, nerves release neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, which binds to acetylcholine receptors on the muscle cells and this will result in muscle contraction. In myasthenia gravis, autoantibodies bind to acetylcholine receptors or MUSC, which is an enzyme important 
in neuromuscular junction development. Binding of these antibodies to these receptor and musk results in less transmission of nerve impulses, leading to muscle weakness. A clinical pearl is myasthenia gravis has a strong association with thymoma. Thus, a structural or propulsive etiology may contribute to dysphagia in these patients. The initial study for suspected oropharyngeal dysphagia is a modified barium swallow with both liquid and a solid phase to help identify the underlying cause. Management strategies include actually treating the underlying cause, dietary changes, and a swallowing exercise program implemented with speech pathologists. The second type of dysphagia after oropharyngeal dysphagia is esophageal dysphagia. In esophageal dysphagia, patients are able to initiate the swallowing process, but often feel discomfort in the mid to lower sternum as the food passes through the esophagus. Again, esophageal dysphagia can be a result of two underlying uh, causes, a structural, which is an obstructive cause, or propulsive, a neurological cause. Structural causes of esophageal dysphagia are either due to internal obstructions within the esophagus or external compression of the esophagus, both of which occludes the lumen. In internal obstructive uh, causes, these can include esophageal carcinoma. A carcinoma will usually cause dysphagia by narrowing or blocking the lumen, obstructing the food that is swallowed. Dysphagia that progresses from occurring with solids to occurring with solids and liquids suggests malignancy as this is slow growing. Peptic strictures are the result of long-standing reflux esophagitis or GORD. A stricture is an esophageal narrowing. Some are benign and are the result of prolonged exposure to the gastric acid due to an incompetent lower sphincter. Fibrosis and scarring ensue and it progresses transmurally, leading to dysphagia. Peptic strictures may also be due to radiation exposure. An upper endoscopy allows for both diagnostic inspection and therapeutic intervention, which is dilation. Foreign bodies can also cause esophageal dysphagia if they become lodged at a point uh, in the esophagus. And there are three main locations that obstruction can occur due to normal anatomical narrowing of the esophagus. These are at the level of the cricopharyngeal muscles, at the carina as the left bronchus crosses the esophagus, and where the esophagus passes through the diaphragm. External compression of the esophagus can lead to esophageal dysphagia. Any mediastinal masses or an aortic aneurysm or ectasia may contribute. Posterior mediastinal masses may occur in children and are neurogenic tumors such as uh, schwannomas. These are slow-growing tumors which may compress the esophagus, leading to the sensation of dysphagia. In adults, anterior mediastinal masses are more likely and are more likely to be of a more sinister etiology such as a lymphoma. Propulsive causes of esophageal dysphagia can be due to achalasia, scleroderma, or rarely hypertensive peristalsis, nutcracker esophagus. Achalasia is due to impaired relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. It often leads to marked dilatation of the distal esophagus and stasis of food in this area. Achalasia often presents with non-acidic regurgitation of undigested food. On a plain x-ray, a bird's beak sign is pathognomonic due to tapering of the distal esophagus. Dysphagia to liquids is characteristic of achalasia. Scleroderma is associated with decreased motility of any part of the gastrointestinal tract, but it more commonly affects the distal end of the esophagus. Scleroderma is a condition characterized by fibrosis of the skin and internal organs. Hence, in the esophagus, it causes smooth muscle atrophy and fibrosis. Dysphagia is an extremely common complication of scleroderma. Hypertensive peristalsis, also known as nutcracker esophagus, is a very rare cause of dysphagia. In this case, esophageal contractions are of very large amplitude but the peristaltic motions 
um, are intact. On barium swallowing, there is a characteristic corkscrew appearance. For esophageal dysphagia, an endoscopy or biopsy should be performed if a mechanical structural pathology is suspected. However, if a neurological cause of esophageal dysphagia is suspected, a barium swallow study can be done. I hope you enjoyed this video on dysphagia. Thank you for watching.